The LH Global Business Convention is being conducted as an event to commemorate the overall uh, convention and exhibition. And we'll be dealing with various partnerships that LH has formed around the world. This session is going to be related to the UN Habitat Cooperative projects with LH. The goal is a future of better cities and cities for all. In this session, we have four directors of regional offices of UN Habitat who will deliver their video messages. And the three of them will be connected real time. And in the Latin American office, they sent a pre recorded video. I would now like to for, uh, introduce the moderator of this session, Ms. Chulbe Ki from LH Global Business Office, Promotion Office. Please welcome her to the stage. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for giving me the floor. And um, as you can see, globally, uh, we are wearing masks to this session. But I think since nobody is around me, I will take it off just to, um, just to conduct this session. Um, so thank you very much uh, for letting me uh, make uh, the introduction uh, to this particular session that we're doing for the LH Global Business Convention. Um, so let me just briefly uh, start by saying that, needless to say, the world is, um, has been greatly affected by COVID-19. Millions of people are still suffering. And of course, the numbers of death is still menacing. And of course, we're still, we are talking about a vaccine and countries like the UK have already started using it. However, so there is hope. However, there is um, the problems that we had, especially in the urban and the housing sector, before COVID-19 continues, uh, continues on. And in fact, it has escalated due to the, to, due to the pandemic. So uh, it has become very serious. So therefore, um, I am honored today to be presenting uh, our guests for this particular session. Um, they are the four regional directors of the UN Habitat, and they will be discussing um, with us some pressing urban and housing issues in their particular uh, region, especially uh, due to COVID-19. Um, what are they doing uh, to recover from the pandemic, and where are their priorities? Um, the audience that is listening in, in right now are, uh, of course, from the public sector, but we also have private uh, businesses and partners who are listening in, in. And I think the private sector also plays a very important role, and they would be very um, interested in hearing uh, from you. So, um, so I don't want to uh, keep you waiting. I would like to um, please invite our four speakers, the regional directors of the UN Habitat. Okay, there they are. <laughs> good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello. 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 Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It, is, uh, it is really nice to see you and welcome to the session. And we are very, very grateful that you are able to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just to remind you, um, we will first have our regional director from Africa, and then we will invite the regional director from the Arab state, um, followed by a pre-recorded remark by the director from LAC, Latin American Caribbean, and then lastly, the director of the Asia Pacific will be speaking. 
All right, so that will be the order. So without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Omar Sila, the director of the, era of, sorry, the African region, to um, speak to us about their priorities in the region. Now, please, I am reminding you that you only have about seven <laughs> minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, greeting from Dakar, Senegal, uh, West Africa. So great honor for me to attend this uh, global business uh, session. And I think uh, I've been attending many times, uh, you know, the Seoul Expo. Today is uh, my pleasure again to come back to this scene to talk about urbanization in Africa. So I prepared some slides. I'm going to run quick uh, under the slide. I don't know if uh, you know the technician has already uploaded it. But I think it's very important to look at the perspective of Africa. I think it is uh, one of the least urbanized you know, in the world. But at the same time, we are seeing a rapid trend of urbanization in Africa. And today, we see this urbanization as an opportunity for growth and for collaboration, but also for incubation, for innovation. That's the reason why. I want to talk about urbanization in Africa under the lens of economic transformation for the continent. Next, the first slide is giving you some figures. As I mentioned, today we are talking about 40% of population living in, uh, in urban area in Africa. But the prospection is uh, by 2050, we will see 1.5 billion people living in urban in Africa, which is a huge population. But the challenge is, is that today, 53% of this population are living in informal settlement. And you may see the challenges because of lack of a good urban governance, a lack of proper planning system, and access to decent housing. That's the reason why we have in sub-Saharan Africa right now, 53% of population living in informal settlement without water and sanitation. So the next slide will show you a particular example of Kenya where we are sitting. And you see the alarming you know, perspective for Kenya where we have a number of 54% of the population doesn't have access to tenant security, and the housing gap is 2 million. And it's just about Kenya, but all Africa, the housing gap is very huge. Uh, but at the same time, in Kenya, we have 60% of population, urban population living in informal settlement, and 22% have, have issues for access to water and sanitation. But today, of course, the COVID-19 has impacted the economy of Africa, and cities are suffering from this uh, loss of growth. And today, we are talking about negative growth in many cities in Africa. That's the reason why this perspective of urbanization is very important, knowing that cities have been in the forefront of this pandemic. And to fix the economy today, uh, cities have to play a critical role on that. Next slide. So the next slide will show you uh, just the paradigm I'm seeing, because poorly managed urbanization is leading in Africa, informal settlement, but also increase of poverty and inequality, uh, but also lack of investment. That's the reason why we need to look at what is required for this urbanization to produce, you know, an economic productivity and sustainable cities, but also at the same time, uh, no competitivity in cities. So the next slide will show you uh, you know, where you inhabit us working now, our footprint uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, because my colleague Erfan will talk about the Arab region. We have some country in Africa which are dedicated to the Arab uh, office. So for us, uh, we are covering 22 countries in Africa, and you see different areas where we are working. I mean, we are dealing with post crisis and uh, resettlement of IDPs. We are dealing with climate change and uh, reducing, you know, risk and uh, disaster. Uh, we are working on land and housing. We are developing national urban policy, uh, but also we are working on informal settlement upgrading and regeneration. And I think Korea has a big experience on that uh, urban regeneration, uh, including as well regional planning. So the next slide as well, uh, this is some activities we are doing. I mean, uh, UN Habitat is supporting 22 countries in Africa to develop national urban policy. Because we cannot talk about smart cities we have basic, without having the basic policy system, including national urban policy regulatory framework. That's the reason why in the strategy plan of UN Habitat, we believe that developing national urban policy will allow cities to have a vision, but also to define priority action uh, to help sustainable cities uh, development. 
So the next slide as well is giving some concrete example. Uh, for example, here in Mozambique, where you and Habitat have been supporting the government of Mozambique after the cyclone on rebuilding school, on development planning, community engagement through waste management and others, housing reconstruction. Uh, and here you can see the Secretary General of the United Nations visiting UN Habitat activities uh, in 2019 after the cyclone where UN Habitat has restored and rehabilitated uh, 2,000 schools and happy that uh, building on the example of Myanmar where education is key. I think that's something which is applicable as well to Africa. The next slide as well will show you what we are doing in Somalia by using digital systems. So we are talking about smart city and digital system is allowing us to boost you know, the revenue, local revenue system uh, from land, from business. And today, UN Habitat has contributed to, you know, to really increase the revenue system from one to three hundred percent revenue now being used uh, to fund the basic infrastructure, to fund hospital, to fund the road, and to fund as well uh, uh, what we call schools and others. This is one experience as we have been very successful and being uh, as well applied in Afghanistan. So the next slide is showing you now the rationale. Uh, I mean, this is something as well which happened in Ghana where we have the visit of the Deputy Secretary General two weeks ago on the work we are doing in informal settlement by provision of water, but also by helping communities on waste management and job creation for use. So why it is important now to invest in urbanization in Africa? Next slide. So as I mentioned, it, uh, Africa is uh, rapidly urbanizing, and today cities are contributing 60 to 70 percent of GDP in, uh, in Africa. But at the same time, we see with this rapid urbanization, the plan of emerging and growing fast secondary and intermediate cities, which is offering an opportunity for investment. Because we are talking about millions and millions of people living here, and they need technology, they need transport, they need uh, smartphone, and they need car, which is really a big market that we need to consider. But at the same time, there's a potential that we can harness in Africa to foster growth. Development of industrial park, startup business, infrastructure development, green economy, all these areas are really potential for Africa. And now we have an enabling environment policy speaking because the government are taking urbanization seriously as a priority because they know that this can contribute to really, you know, enhancing the economy, but also developing transformative cities. So on that, uh, regional of for Africa has developed some strategy, which is the next slide. Uh, where we try to adapt, you know, our thinking with the new context of COVID-19, but also the priority of the continent. And you see to the next, in the next slide, uh, we try to address, uh, you know, the regional framework because Africa has its priorities through the African Union, but also we are pursuing the SDGs and we are pursuing the new, habitat, the new urban agenda, including the UN Habitat Strategy Plan. So what's the reason why we want to come up with this? Uh, the next slide will show you the objective we are pursuing. First of all, it's about using urbanization as a leverage for economic transformation for Africa so that we can catch at least the gap in terms of development. And for that, we want to make sure cities become engine for economic growth, but also we want to make sure cities are contributing to reducing inequalities but also we want to make sure cities are resilient and can cope with disease as we experience it with the COVID-19. And lastly, the issue of capacity for cities to be able to promote the urban development we need. So how are we going to go about it? I think that's where it's important, the discussion in terms of collaboration with Alex. Next slide, we'll show you some concrete action that we want to promote. First of all, if you want to create uh, smart cities, if you want to create viable and livable cities, there's some prerequisite we need to fill. And first of all is urban policy and legislation and governance, which are key. And the second point is revenue from integrating planning system, which is very important. As I mentioned in the secondary cities, there's a lack of planning, lack of capacity. There's a need to really put this framework for planning, physical planning, to allow to you know, fix those priority in terms of investment and infrastructure development. Key element as well, increase access to housing, land, basic services is key for Africa now because the gap uh, in terms of infrastructure, we are talking about billion and billion of dollars. But also Africa is facing a lot of conflict and taking into consideration the issue of durable solution for displaced persons is very important. And lastly, building resilient and smart cities 
so that they can cope with climate change disaster, but also how to harvest the advantage from green economy from the field, from the from the sea and coastal cities is very important. So how are we going to implement this? This is my last slide. <laughs> Uh, our strategy is collaborating with African Union, of course, which is the regional body, you know, for covering all member states. Uh, but also, we are much more engaged on the UN reform uh, for the delivery as one, but also for following up this uh, decade of action. But also, we build our system on partnership, public, private, and people partnership. And I think Mohammed uh, El Sherif has talked about it in his speech. But also creating capacity and institution at the municipal level is very important. And last point is leapfrogging critical purpose technology where we can bring this aspect of smart cities. And this is just in a nutshell some reflection on priority for Africa and we look forward to discussing and to strengthen this collaboration. Thank you very much, Becky. I'm very humbled to be here. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Omar. That was a very long seven minutes. <laughs> Uh, but of course, I, I, I understand you, you are in the middle, I mean, the time difference, so I, I didn't want to take the opportunity to say everything you had to say. Um, of course, for Korea, uh, urbanization was actually the source of our economic growth, so I hope that, that you, you know, we can continue the conversation so that we can, um, we can also contribute to the economic development of Africa. Thank you so much, uh, Omar. All right, now I would like to uh, pass the floor to Dr. Erfan Ali. Um, it's a great pleasure to be to have you here at our um, convention. Uh, again, I would like to apply that seven minute rule. However, uh, please share with us uh, the priorities and your issues in the region. Doctor. Thank you, good afternoon. Uh, honorable uh, LH uh, management and uh, I'm, I'm so happy to join you today. Normally, I'm based in uh, Cairo, but uh, I'm connecting today uh, from, uh, from Beirut, where I joined our team this week to contribute and to follow on our ongoing efforts for the recovery after the Beirut uh, port uh, blast happened in uh, last August, as we all know. This event is very timely on the reconstruction and cooperation in the post-COVID, uh, um, uh, in particular for our region, uh, where we have uh, one of the fastest growing, uh, 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 fastest urbanizing regions in the, um, in the world. Uh, next slide, please. The Arab region, the Arab or the MENA region, um, uh, has currently around 59% of the population live in the urban areas. And this number is expected to increase to 70% in uh, 2050. However, in some countries, we have uh, more than 90% uh, of the population live in the urban areas like uh, Kuwait, like UAE, like uh, 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 even here in Lebanon, we are talking about uh, mostly an, an urban country. Um, however, also, we have huge challenges, urban challenges in the Arab region uh, with more than 33% of the population still live in informal areas, around 81 million. And uh, uh, the population, as we all know, is quite young in the Arab region. Um, still, also, the Arab region is the largest uh, 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 center or epicenter of the displaced and refugees due to the large number of conflicts in the Arab region. We, are, we host around 25 million displaced or uh, uh, internally displaced people or refugees, creating a huge challenges also on the infrastructure, on the uh, social cohesion, on the integration at the city level, and the huge challenges for the cities, for the, for the urban uh, uh, management to, uh, uh, to address all these uh, uh, issues. Um, uh, as example, still in the region, we have more than 240 million lack access to safe water in the region, lack, lacking access to water and wash services. 
since we are talking also about the post-COVID, according to the recent Secretary General brief of, uh, uh, on our region uh, and the impact of COVID, we expect that we, the region will lose around 152 billion of its GDP after the, the COVID. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here I will hi highlight on our um, on our exp experience in the Arab region, the Arab Ormena region, the nature of field work, and our relationship with governments and the national trying to address the national priorities. For sure, our work is informed by several global and regional agendas and frameworks. Our work is informed by the national priorities, the work of the United Nations at the country level. Uh, we, on our side, we tried to localize the strategic plan that was mentioned by my colleague Omar and by the Secretary General uh, to support the region, support its pathway towards sustainable urbanization or sustainable urban development. The four pillars or domains of change were reflected in our region, in our strategic plan, taking into account the cross-cutting issues of human rights, gender, youth, and innovation. Special outputs also were prioritized under each outcome of the domains of change, depending on the country-specific context, as shown in the following uh, slides. Can we go next, please? So uh, as, we see, as we see here, we notice specific focus in our portfolio on urban economy, on providing support to urban ba to basic services in the region, supporting also in risk reduction and rehabilitation due to the large number of conflicts, like in Syria, like in Iraq, Yemen, Libya, Sudan, uh, Palestine, and recently in Lebanon. Also, we still uh, support on research and capacity building of, um, of our counterparts at the city and the region uh, 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 at the region, uh, regional level. Uh, however, uh, we are implementing significant interventions to support land and urban legislation, like in uh, similar to our work in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Palestine, also in urban planning and design in Morocco, Tunisia, uh, Palestine, through the, the national urban policies, uh, through the uh, different kinds of interventions in Jordan, in Syria, housing slums upgrading. We have launched a regional program to address uh, uh, or to eliminate the, the um, uh, or to reduce the number of informality in our cities in, in different countries. Um, and we are trying to build more partnership uh, and engage other partners to support or to join these efforts like uh, the World Bank, like the Islamic Development Bank, the, uh, the European Union, and other possible partners in this area. Next slide, please. As all other regions in our our region was um, heavily impacted by the by the impact of um, uh, by COVID-19, and uh, through our um, through our engagement in the region, we are trying to support um, the, the counterpart governments to identify um, the most uh, uh, to identify the focused areas of uh, impacted by the COVID-19, uh, uh, the high-risk urban areas. We try to support through spatial analysis and mapping the hotspots to shape the local response and the, the to, 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 to build and uh, help the planning for the local authorities and cities to, to target these areas. Also, we work together with the, with the counterparts to provide water and sanitation in many areas, like in Iraq or in Egypt. We are working together to mobilize integrated community-driven response building uh, leaving no one behind application in Tunisia to support the elderly and to uh, uh, reduce the impact uh, uh, the impact of the COVID on, on the elderly, uh, supporting uh, the homeless also in different areas. Uh, uh, still, we are also working on mitigating the local economic impact through new livelihood projects, interventions in Jordan, and recently supporting on urban gardening, as example, in Palestine. Um, we continue working on active le learning and uh, to, to on appropriate COVID-19 response, uh, particularly in the informal areas. Uh, uh, just I'll refer to please next slide. I'll refer to two examples of, of our ongoing work in the in the region, ongoing relevant work in the region in uh, uh, in Egypt. The largest planning uh, work of, of UN Habitat in the Arab region, we are supporting the first green and resilient city. It's 
called Al Alamein City. Al Alamein New City. The city was built, was planned and built now by the counterparts of the Egyptian government. Uh, it's an explicit example of a green and resilient city. Our largest uh, uh, Next, please. Our largest urban recovery program in the Arab region, supporting on housing rehabilitation, supporting also addressing issues related to the challenges related to land tenure, security, and uh, for urban recovery, is in sorry, the, the, uh, is in, on, in Iraq. Uh, uh, we missed this slide. This is an example of our ongoing work in Iraq on land property rights and housing rehabilitation, housing and infrastructure rehabilitation. Next slide, please. So a partnership for us, as mentioned by, by my colleague Omar, is the enabler, uh, uh, is the enabler of our, uh, for the implementation of our strategic plan. We cannot implement our efforts. We cannot implement the strategic plan only through the capacity of UN Habitat. Therefore, we try always to enhance, advocate for joint collaboration in forums like this forum and to implement it jointly with all relevant partners. So we have uh, uh, the Arab state, we have the Arab state regional collaboration framework. We have the Arab ministerial forum for housing and urban development, the pan-Arab urban development symposium, the Arab sustainable development report, so different platforms in order to encourage, to promote, advocate for joint efforts to accelerate sustainable urbanization in the region. Uh, next slide, please. Here I will mention to some potential areas where we can further advance collaboration with partners like LH and like other government partners, public partners, uh, uh, non-public also partners from Korea and other countries. Uh, I want to start by, refer uh, by referring to knowledge sharing and capacity development uh, uh, and the example of Kuwait, because in Kuwait, in line with the recently launched national campaign on, um, on Green Kuwait that we are implementing together with the Ministry of Municipalities, and other partners, we are working on a greening public space with participation of many government agencies, private sector, and volunteers. We aim at improving the housing conditions also of, <clears throat> of migrant workers in Kuwait and other Gulf countries like the UAE and Saudi Arabia, and mitigating the impact of COVID-19 on the overcrowded and substandard housing conditions through planning and constructing affordable housing units for migrant workers. So LH cooperation could be invited to present its tools and, appro and approaches in the Arab region or through maybe through study visits to Korea could be, uh, that, that could be organized for key partners in the Arab region in this context. Mm. Second point, I want to refer to land administration and land use planning because Korea has a very advanced and well-functioning land administration and land use planning system. It would be great for the Arab or MENA region to learn more about this and to adapt lessons learned from in, in our region. Korea could be introduced to the land administration scenario in selected countries mm -hmm. to explore areas of collaboration. Housing projects also, and the, the example of Iraq, uh, um, uh, where, and uh, not only Iraq, because in the region we lost around between 3.5 to 4 million housing units due to the conflicts in Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Libya. This is our estimation as UN Habitat. So, but I refer to Iraq because it's our largest program. Housing is a key area of common interest. Mm -hmm. We hope that the new project that we are discussing now with Koika will okay, increase fine. our Iraq housing portfolio and okay. be a good mutual learning opportunity for you and Habitat and the LH uh, Corporation. Thank you. Uh, then <laughs> green and smart cities, as mentioned also by my colleague Omar, these, this kind of projects, mm -hmm. innovative technologies are extremely relevant to our region in many areas in the Gulf and also in Egypt. We are exerting now a huge efforts to introduce this new concept, especially in the new cities in, in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Collaboration with Korean NGOs and civil society is very, very potential. Korea has a vibrant civil okay. society that I am finished and I'm done. <laughs> yes. Society that could further expose to the UN habitat work in the region. Urban housing and forums also, like the events that I mentioned, we will be very happy to engage with LH and other Korean partners to attend our forums to enhance, accelerate the partnership wow. on sustainable urbanization. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. That was that was very enlightening, and we are doing a, a project in Kuwait, and we'll be very happy to discuss. Hello, thank you from UN Habitat Latin America and the Caribbean to LH Global Business Convention organizers for this kind invitation towards uh, exploring opportunities and areas for 
joint partnerships uh, work down the road. Thank you for this invitation. I want now to share with you from our region, Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, what UN Habitat is doing. Let us recall that we are in a very particular area of the world uh, where almost all countries are middle income countries. And of course, that comes with a very specific way of uh, doing cooperation uh, for our region, uh, which is uh, very much about uh, how to develop catalytic inter interventions, how to develop pipelines of projects for uh, that will represent opportunities for investors, for development partners, and uh, uh, also for um, partners from outside the region. This is a region where uh, innovation happens every time related to the uh, projects that the UN Habitat has been uh, leading in the region. As uh, I'm showing here some of the examples uh, during the last uh, period of uh, six, seven years. At this very moment in Latin America and the Caribbean, we are developing a portfolio, total portfolio of uh, some uh, 43.5 million US dollars that is allowing uh, to have an important impact in the region. And there are some examples of the good work that we are doing in this region. For instance, in Mexico, the Mesoamerica region, uh, we are supporting the national government, the federal government in uh, uh, developing a strategy for the Southeast region in Mexico, that is the poorest part of the country around the regional urban corridor uh, defined by the train Maya. In a country like Bolivia, supported by uh, Sweden, for instance, we are advancing with the government in the program towards developing the national urban policy. And at this very moment, the, uh, the process is in the next step, which is identifying specific interventions to materialize the national urban policy. A wealth of uh, projects that are going to bring uh, important positive impacts for, uh, for neighborhood cities, for citizens, and of course, opportunities for investment and for uh, partners. In, still in the Andean countries, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, uh, supported by the European Union, we are working with local authorities, those that are hosting a massive income, a massive flow of Venezuelan migrants uh, towards developing interventions that will allow for uh, uh, sustainable integration, socioeconomic integration of those families and, uh, and, and these people. Uh, in the Southern Con in Brazil, for instance, we are known by being leading in the support to efforts by local governments towards uh, slum upgrading, towards neighborhood upgrading. This is the case in Brazil, but also in the Anglophone Caribbean, our participatory slum upgrading program is developing very important interventions to support the policy development at national level. For instance, in Jamaica, Haiti, Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, uh, and uh, San Vincent and the Grenadines. During this pandemic, UN Habitat has been there also as a key partner towards uh, uh, supporting selected interventions in some countries, in Bolivia on food security, in Brazil on monitoring of uh, COVID-19 impact in the poorest areas of uh, some cities, in Mexico uh, developing uh, support through guidelines to be applied by local authorities in the post-recovery plan, and so on and so forth in different areas of the region. What we want now is uh, to go to a next level. What is that next level? Is uh, understanding the condition of middle income countries. Also getting all the results and outputs from a number of interventions, some led by UN Habitat, some led by other development partners, and uh, taking into consideration the specificity of our contexts and the number of countries, number of municipalities, of course, numbers of inhabitants, trying to find a new opportunity to go towards a regional pipeline of investment projects for sustainable urban development in Latin America and the Caribbean. We are supporting all our partners in the region towards developing this pipeline that will allow us to have a more informed conversation, plenty of opportunities with our development partners. 
Internally, from a technical perspective, this is supported in UN Habitat by the SDG Cities flagship program, but also by the Cities Investment Facility of UN Habitat and other partners. So we are developing the regional package, the regional perspective, the regional component of these global uh, flagship initiatives. Uh, and more importantly, this under the patronage of Minurbi being the assembly of ministers of high level authorities of urban development and housing in the Latin America and the Caribbean. We expect that uh, this would be uh, something uh, that we can continue discussing with uh, all of you in South Korea towards increasing our partnership for sustainable urban development in the world and in Latin America and the Caribbean in particular. I thank you very much for this opportunity to share some views with you. And go directly to um, Dr. Korezawa uh, to speak a little bit about the Asian region, and then we can move directly to signing the MOU. Please, doctor. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Kurisawa Atsushida from UN Habitat uh, Japan Regional Office, and I live in Hukuka. That's right. Yes, doctor. I think okay, your slide. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I think your slide is on. Yes. Okay, so please go to the next one. So um, our region, uh, Asia Pacific region, covers uh, 42 countries with uh, country offices in 17 countries. And we, are, we have an ongoing project in 23 countries in the region. Please next, go to the next. And uh, already you know that you know, Asia Pacific uh, is urbanized, has been urbanizing fastest among all regions, although more recently, uh, Perhaps uh, Africa and Arab regions are uh, probably in also urbanizing uh, as fast as Asia Pacific region. And we are in uh, what we call uh, age of rapid urbanization. And every year, um, 75 million people are added to urban population worldwide. Next, please. And we are now uh, also uh, facing the unprecedented challenges caused by uh, COVID-19, already, as already you know. And these uh, unprecedented challenges are characterized by three, uh, in my definition or in my view, three uh, kind of trends. Number one is uh, we are seeing more and more growing income and asset disparities. And of course, the poor are the most affected by COVID-19. Uh, secondly, uh, many experts say, I mean, environmental degradation, especially deforestation and urbanization, is could be uh, one of the causes of the uh, this kind of viruses, including COVID-19. And thirdly, uh, already uh, referred to mentioned by uh, previous speakers, we are seeing the digital uh, digital transformation, and certainly COVID-19 is accelerating this trend. And uh, we know that um, digital industries, despite this uh, you know, economic crisis, are booming, uh, despite all economic downturns in different countries. And digital divide is perhaps growing as well. Next, next slide, please. So what, what Bank and other institutes already reported that uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, already increased the number of uh, people who are uh, in extreme poverty or the number of poor already, and uh, as this graph shows. So, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, those probably uh, in coming years or coming uh, months, I mean, this number may, may, be, may be increasing. Uh, next, please. Next slide, please. And probably uh, you already know that, um, everybody knows that uh, SDGs is uh, uh, the global agenda. And COVID-19 is affecting almost all aspects of uh, SDGs, delaying the progress of SDGs, which are the target 2030, but probably the progress has been delayed already quite a lot. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, let me uh, uh, brief you on what we are doing in, in the region. And I have selected only a few among uh, quite many projects, ongoing projects. 
let me just highlight uh, uh, some of them. Uh, in Myanmar, we are working on informal settlements. Informal settlement is one of the key uh, subject matters of UN habitat. And also, we are working for land reforms in, in various countries, including Nepal, and also in Cambodia. We are now working with a uh, local government. Uh, it's a, the, city, uh, the city of Sianukville to develop smart, sustainable, and inclusive city. And in India, we are also collaborating with uh, our counterpart to develop sustainable cities in, in that country. And also in many um, Asia Pacific region is uh, the one of the most disaster prone region in the world. So we are working with countries and cities to increase or strengthen their disaster resilience against many different types of disasters, including flood, earthquakes, and so on and so forth. So forth. Also, we are uh, working with in the Philippines to uh, solve the problem of uh, plastic waste and particularly marine litter. So there are many initiatives in the region. We are already engaged and working with the government and cities and many institutions. Uh, next slide, please. Let me briefly touch on how we are collaborating with different institutions in South Korea. In Vietnam, we are uh, collaborating with Korea Environment Industry and Technology Institute to support uh, project development for accessing global climate financing. Also, uh, with Land and Housing Institute, we are working for the field research in large Vietnamese cities for social housing policy development in Vietnam. In Sri Lanka and Pakistan, we have been working with COICA to, uh, for emergency support and social, uh, special assistance to marginalized estate and rural communities. Also in Pakistan, uh, we are kind of uh, supporting facilitating return of IDPs through rehabilitation of community infrastructure and facilities. UN Habitat has a long-term uh, collaboration with an um, institute called International Urban Training Center, which is actually located in Chuncheon, uh, in Guang, Guangdong-do. I visited Chuncheon uh, two years ago, and uh, Chuncheon is famous for, of course, I mean, uh, Korean drama, uh, <laughs> Winter so uh, uh, Sonata. But I also like very much Duck Karbi. Duck Karbi is famous for, for <laughs> Chuncheon as well. So this, this is a, a collaboration to provide the uh, capacity building to uh, many countries across the region. And now we are seeing the opportunities to further expand our partnership with, with Korea and different institutes. And actually, this is a, a uh, collaboration with LH. We are now uh, uh, working with uh, uh, LH to effectively respond. I think my seven minutes already finished. Okay. okay, let me quickly go to that. And also, we are working with uh, other um, East-West Power Company of Korea. Mm -hmm. Let me move on to the next slide. Um, okay, uh, Habitat is running uh, mm -hmm. five flagship programs. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention one by one, uh, but Please go to the next one. I picked up two areas which are, are probably, um, you know, we can further explore the mm -hmm. collaboration with LH. One is, of course, uh, adequate and affordable housing. And my colleagues already mentioned the need of the policies and instruments to enable uh, adic support on the provision of adequate and affordable housing in many developing countries, and also middle-income countries as well. Mm -hmm. Another area uh, I picked up is a uh, smart city. Already previous uh, speakers touched on this smart city, but our focus is more people-centered or mm -hmm. people-focused smart city. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, policy framework, and we have a uh, platform to support. So uh, we, we can further, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, explore the possibility of uh, working more closely and working more with LH in those areas. I think that's my last slide. Thank you.
So thank you so much. I probably spent a little bit more than seven minutes, but <laughs> probably shorter than my, my colleagues. Thank, thank you. you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kurosawa. Now, um, uh, please, ex I will have to uh, express my sincere, sincere apologies to Dr. Elkin, um, the director of LAC, because we were not able to, um, to send out his message. Now, um, again, thank you. And uh, we now are going to go into signing the M you with the Asia Pacific director um, and this is very important because this is the first step that we move from words to action and it really concerns about a very serious issue that we looked about which is about climate change low carbon emission and this is something that our president uh, his excellency president moon has emphasized with net zero or, or um, carbon neutrality policy so uh, we're very happy to do the MOU, and now I will pass the floor again to the MC so that she can now um, conduct the ceremony. Thank you very much, Mr. Speakers. 네, 여러분, 조 단장님께 큰 박수 보내주십시오. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm round of applause to Ms. Jo Becky in charge of Global Business Promotion Office at LH. We have listened to the various representatives and directors of the regional offices of UN Habitat, and we, I, I'm sure you'll agree with me that all of the presentations were very um, informative and significant in content. And it is a pleasure and a uh, honor for LH to be a part of all of these efforts. So for the MOU signing, I would like to ask Mr. Lee Yong sam the LH Global Business Office Head and the Director of the UN Habitat Asia Pacific Office up on stage to sign the MOU. Would you like to say a couple of words, Mr. Lee? Good afternoon. I'm in charge of the Global Business Office at LH. My name is Yi Yong Sam. It is an honor and a pleasure for me to sign the MOU with UN Habitat. In the future as well, I sincerely hope that our cooperation and joint efforts will bring about sustainable urban development in the future. For our side, the first objective of our global business at LH is joint growth with inclusive society as a goal, resilient cities and sustainable housing-related issues that were outlined by the representatives at UN Habitat, they coincide with the direction of our goals and our efforts. In 19 countries in Latin America, we are conducting 39 projects related to smart cities or affordable housing or industrial complexes. There are a total of 35 projects, excuse me, going on in Latin America. Now, in the African continent, we are not actively participating, but in next year, in 2021, for affordable housing and smart city projects, we will take part. So for smart city, um, in the Arab region, especially for Abdullah City, we have about 30 component technologies that we are going to deliver to the government of Kuwait. We have currently concluded the discussions with the government, and next year, we, uh, we actually have signed an MOU with Cusco City this year, for which we'll be establishing concrete plans next year. So today we are signing this MOU with UN Habitat, and thanks to this, I believe that in the future, there are uh, many regions and countries around the world um, in all continents that are suffering from affordable housing shortages. So with UN Habitat and LH working together for sustainable urban development, I believe that we'll be able to achieve a lot. Thank you very much. 네, 고맙습니다, 본부장님.
Thank you very much. Now we will proceed with uh, the signing of the partnership MOU between LH and UN Habitat. If you look at the screen, you will see what is being signed. At the LH Global Business Convention, a new and very precious partnership has been born. With the MOU signed, we will now take a photograph of the two people who signed the MOU. We will now take a commemorative photo. With the building of this new global partnership, we look forward to the many collaborative projects between LH and UN Habitat, and we look forward to the two institutions taking the lead. Uh, we would like to take a photograph, including all the presenters in this session. We have uh, the faces of the four speakers as well. We will take another photograph. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for participating in this session. Uh, and I'd like to thank all the speakers and participants. With this, we will conclude the signing ceremony for MOU between LH and UN Habitat. We will have another short break and proceed with the low carbon development linked business model which will be the theme of the next session. So please bear with us and stay until the very end. I will see you again shortly.